Hello, so um, a few students have come up to me and asked me how, if I could create a tutorial um, on how to do some, um, some basic uh, Copic marker rendering, mixed media Copic marker rendering, um, with limited time and limited skill. So this is if you have never done it before. Okay, so this is kind of a sample of what we're going to do. Um, so let's make a start on it. Okay, so this is based on the idea of you don't have much time. Okay. So um, now this student has provided me with the um, consent to show you their design in this. Uh, so some of the materials that you're going to be using is obviously, <clears throat> you've got the Copic marker, so I'm using a, um, this one here is, well, I'm just going to zoom out by the way. So this one here is the Vermin Linen and I'm using a light blue as well. So you can use whatever colour you wish. Uh, however, um, I'm just using these ones for the sake of it at the moment. The reason why I chose the two of them is because, obviously, um, they're complementary, okay, to a certain extent. Okay, so obviously this one is a secondary and this is a, a primary but a, a lighter shade. Okay, so let's jump into it. Um, I have here, it's a photocopy of the original and this is on a photocopy of paper. However, this could be um, bleed proof paper. Okay, so bleed proof is pretty much a photocopy of paper um, with a wax surface on the back, so it prevents bleed through. So you can see here, I've got a protective sheet which has got some bleed, proof, bleed through from the previous work. Okay, so now um, to quickly do this and to quickly make this look really nice, I'm just gonna zoom into it from a distance. Let's see if we can use the zoom feature on this document camera. There we go, so I don't hit the document camera by accident. All right, so uh, first of all, um, you need to understand that the Copic Market is obviously the fine tip as well as a broad tip, okay? The fine tip, the fine tip is here, okay? So let's um, jump into the Copic Marker. So I'm going to um, quickly place in tone, a flat tone across all of the parts that I want to be orange. So I'm just gonna lay this down very quickly, making sure that I'm doing this very quickly, okay? Because I want this to, I want the copy marker to be nice and um, wet still. So it all bleeds through. Okay, so there we go, we've got that side there. Um, you'll notice that if I'm using bleed proof, it's gonna bleed a lot less, okay? Because it has that surface, that better surface for copy markers. Okay, so I've got my um, tone there. I'm also going to, um, oh, I didn't get a gray. Oh well. So I'm gonna, going to use a blue as well in this section then. Okay, and it's bleeding a fair bit at the moment, unfortunately. Okay, so there we have it. So I'm just gonna wait for that to dry. And um, what I need to do now is I need to establish a light source. Okay, so this is basic Copic marker rendering, by the way. Okay, so there are better methods of doing this, but this is one of the ways you can explore in your folio. So um, I've also got a Derwent um, 24 set. All you need in this set is uh, a white and a black Derwent. So let's open that up. Hopefully this pack has a white and a black, and it certainly does. So the white, this one is the Chinese white. Chinese white 72, and we have the, um, we'll try the ivory black, which is number 67. If you are doing, let's say, if you're doing a gun, for example, um, there is one called gun metal, and that is the gun metal one there to use as well, okay? All right, so let's get into this a little bit more. So we will need to establish a, um, a light source, and the light source is over here. So I'm just going to draw an arrow in for the light source, just so we remind ourselves of where the light source is. So obviously this side here is going to be fairly dark, so let's start um, drawing in the dark area. Okay, so nice and hard there, nice hard edge. Okay, and we're going to um, use the um, Derwent to bring in some of that dark edge there. So you can use the, the, um, the edge of the, the Derwent, the side, and render in like this to give a nice smooth tone. So we need to gradient out, okay? So obviously, as you can see, some improvements there already. And then we flick to get rid of some of the, um, the tone of the direction of the, um, of the Derwent that we'd had before. 
Okay, so I'm going to do this very quickly. Um, you could do a much better job than I'm doing right now. Okay, so we're building up tone. So hopefully you can see that. Okay, so this side here is going to be dark. So let's put that darkness in. Okay, and this is a chance for you to also clean up the, um, the bleed for the copper marker itself. So let's put the tone in for this. I like to start off with the, um, the darks first because um, I like to get a bit more mood in, more dramatic sort of shading in, in it. Okay, so I'm gonna come around here, exploring different angles here, obviously. And blend out. So I'm just skimming across the surface when I get to the side here, right around this spot here. I'm going quite dark. Okay, and then I'm going out. Nice and light. So this is going to give you a really good quality um, look with little prior understanding of how to use Copics. Okay, so they're the darks for the time being. I might put in another dark to sort of tone here um, on this section here. Okay. All right. And obviously here, I'm gonna need to put in a dark part there for the back part of the chair. And I'm gonna blend this out too to make it three dimensional. Okay, so that's it there for the time being. All right, so um, some other things too. Um, now that I've used vermilinen, I could use the dark, the deep vermilinen color on the Derwent to bring in, fix up some of the mistakes that I made on the Copic, or I could just come across with the Copic and fix it up with a fine tip. And just go across there, there like that. Okay. All right, cool. So now we need to put in the highlights. So you can do highlights in different ways. You could use um, the Derwent first. So let's try the Derwent first. And we'll put in, making sure the Derwent is nice and light, and nice and sharp, sorry. We'll put a highlight in this section here. Okay. And you've got to think about where the rises and falls are. So this here is slightly in shadow, ever so slightly in shadow, so don't worry about that. This side here is in, um, in highlight. So we can do that. Give it a bit of a stylized end there. Okay. We can blend that out slightly. And the same here too. We can blend some of these things out as well. Okay. Cool. So that's one method. Right. So that is Derwent and Copics. Okay, or Copics or whatever you want to call it. Everyone's got different ways of saying it. Okay, so that's using those ones and as well as the, um, the ivory black. You can take this a step further using a third medium. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this across and you could use watercolor, but not so much watercolor. You could also, you could use um, gouache, okay? Now, um, I kind of like gouache, okay? So gouache is a water-based color medium, sorry, Gouache is a water-based medium that dries nice and thick. Okay, so I've got my um, watercolour palette here, but I've got here white gouache. And this here is Windsor & Newton. I believe this is one is Windsor & Newton um, Zinc White. Okay, for those who want to know. So I'm going to apply this um, with a um, wet on dry method, meaning that the paper is dry and this brush is wet. Okay, so I'm going to first of all, um, I'm going to first of all wet this um, gouache up, just so I can get my pigment up, because this is dry gouache. You can do it out of a tube, it's going to be much quicker, but here I've got a palette with white gouache that is dry. Okay, so I need to establish, I need to make sure that this brush has got a nice fine tip on it. Okay. So let's try this out now. I'm going to apply 100% gouache on this surface and I'm going to put in some highlights. Okay, so you can do this nice and faintly, nice and lightly. Okay, you can put in little dots and stuff of white. It adds more real, realism to it. Okay, cool. You can also do it here as well. So these are, naps, are absolute highlights for this chair. Okay, you can put in little 
dabs of highlight there. Cool. Okay, so you can might even put like a little highlight there because it's shining through on that side. So that's all it is, it's just little accents there that you need. Okay, so let's take this a little bit further, even more further. So obviously I'm building this up. You can stop at any time, okay? All right, so I'm, I've got my, um, my white doant again, and I've got now a texture board. So this texture board is available a lot of the art stores and they're called texture boards, okay? You can even 3D print them as well. So what you do is you place your texture board underneath, underneath the page, and you can come across here on the side of your pencil, of the Derwent, and put in, now it needs to be nice and taut, and you put in a hard, nice hard um, push down on, the, on it, and you can actually get some nice texture in for the actual surface itself there too. So you can try that, that type of stuff out as well. That's also just adding to the realism of this product. Okay, adding some texture in there. So you can see that occurring there. You can also add a darker tone to it as well. So you can also put in um, a darker tone for the stippling as well, if you want to put that in there as well. Okay, and that is it. You don't overdo it. Um, some other things a lot of product designers do is they like to add in um, like a, a square behind it just to give, make it sort of pop out from the, um, the shot, the, the drawing itself. So let's put that in, okay. Nice and dark. I'm going over some other bit of, bit of drawing, but oh well. Okay, and now it's bleeding over there, but we can't really help that at this stage in time. Okay, so that's a bit of a bad thing on my, in my regard. You can come across there and put a bit of white gouache in, or what have you. Okay, so that's another effect you could do with it too. Okay, just know that um, with, with um, Copic marker, you can come across this when, when this is all dry, you can add in um, darker bits to this and give it some movement as well, okay? So that also works as well. Cool, I did, it, I did, it, um, I did mine a bit too fast so you can see a lot of bleeding going on there. So um, that's a mistake on my behalf. You can fix that by using a bit of gouache or what have you as well, okay? So that's done and dusted. You can also put in some um, little highlights in there too if you wish as well. Okay, and that'll be all. Thank you. Bye.